G'day. So today I'd like to introduce word classes uh, in Pamanyongan languages. The word classes uh, of Pamanyongan languages. Uh, and I'm going to compare to the word classes in two much better known uh, languages, Swedish and English. And hopefully you will see that the difference is quite big. Uh, first though, can I just say about this t-shirt that this was the t-shirt of the Postgraduate Students Association at the University of Western Australia when I was an exchange PhD student there. Uh, and I thought it was kind of funny, so I bought one. Equally funny was when I came back to Sweden uh, to my department at Uppsala University after six months. Because you see, the administrative staff, the moment they saw this t-shirt, uh, they felt a strong compulsion to cut down the tall poppy, as the Australian uh, expression goes. Aussies and many people who have been to Australia will know what that means, uh, I'm sure. Uh, I thought it was quite hilarious that they reacted instantly. Uh, these days I do have a real job though. Uh, but anyway, moving on to word classes. Uh, when I was in school and was taught the word classes, uh, I was taught this acronym to remember them by. So I'm going to use this acronym to briefly introduce word classes in Swedish and English, because I do believe that these two languages have the exact same word classes uh, that are distinguished. And, and that is not so strange because they are closely related. Now, when words are divided into word classes, semantic criteria are important. Uh, that has to do with the meaning of words. Syntactic criteria are also important. Where in clauses words are used and how. Uh, and there are also morphological criteria, which has to do with inflections. What types of inflections uh, do words take? So, using Svaprika, to introduce the word classes. First, we have an S, as you can see. Uh, S stands for substantive, noun. And nouns are names for things, people, places, and so on. And then we have the V, which stands for verbs. Uh, verbs which describe what happens what people do, etc. We have two A's. Uh, adjectives. They describe nouns. And then we have two P's that follow. Uh, prepositions and pronouns. Pronouns which are used instead of nouns. Hence the name, pro-noun. R stands for rakneud, numerals. I for interjections, which are exclamations like au or ouch, which are uttered spontaneously and which do not interact with other words in clauses, so to speak. Uh, and it has been found in languages around the world that inter, uh, interjections tend to break phonological rules uh, and phonotactic constraints. So that is something that interjections have in common uh, all over the planet. K for conjunction. Words like and or or. And A for adverb, 
adverbs which describe the verbs. Uh, now in Swedish there is an ongoing, or in Sweden, there is an ongoing debate about whether uh, conjunctions should be divided up into two word classes. Conjunctions, the, uh, words like and or or, on the one hand, and on the other, uh, subordinators, which we in Swedish call subjunktioner. So subordinators are the words that occur first in dependent clauses. So whether we should distinguish nine or ten word classes is a matter of taste, I would say. Uh, but anyway, we have nine or ten word classes. Compare that to Pamanyunga languages. Uh, R. M. W. Dixon, also known as Bob Dixon, famous professor of linguistics, uh, on occasion called Richard Dixon, by people who didn't know what the initial R stood for. Uh, Dixon reacted very strongly to that. Uh, but anyway, uh, R. M. W. Dixon has suggested that uh, words in Pamanyunga languages should be divided into three word classes based only on morphology. Uh, and what we get here then is nominals which take case marking. What is case marking? Well, this is something I will have reason to get back to because you see Australia and New Guinea is, or at least was, uh, the area of the world with the largest concentration of case marking languages. Uh, and it so happens that I will soon post a video where, where I start to introduce uh, case marking in Pamanyunga languages. Uh, we get verbs which take tense, aspect, mood, and person marking. Uh, perhaps not all of these, uh, but a few of these anyway. And I should say that verbs are words that take tense, aspect, mood, and person marking in main clauses. Why? because in dependent clauses uh, verbs take case marking and rest assured I will have reason to get back to this. And then we have particles which in fact take no inflections uh, and in Pamanyunga languages these are the two main clauses. Uh, we have a lot of inflections and uh, this distinction works as a rough dis uh, distinction or division of the words into word classes. Uh, what you get here is that you get a number of nominal uh, subclasses and I have written three examples here, uh, nouns, pronouns and numerals. And there are more, and I will get back to this too. Uh, there are Pamanyunga languages that have adjectives as a distinct uh, word class. Those Pamanyunga languages are not in the majority, but there are such languages. Uh, is Ngara to be found among those languages? Well, it so happens that in my next video about word classes, I am going to discuss that very topics. Did I say topics? Topic. Yes, topic. Okay. So, uh, and in the languages in the north and northwest of Australia, which have complex verb constructions, uh, as they are called, a fifth word class needs to be distinguished. 
Now, most of these languages are non pamanyungan They belong to other language families. Uh, but there are also uh, pamanyungan languages that belong uh, to this group. Uh, and it so happens that Ngara is one such language. Perhaps the southernmost uh, of these languages. So here is a Ngara example. And you see that I have underlined Nyandarkuri. These are two words. They are written as two words anyway, because both of these units, perhaps we could call them, they attract main stress uh, on the first syllable. But the fact is that they together constitute one verb. So Nyandarkuri means is gulping. So here we have Nguningo Marongolu, that man, Wula, water, is gulping. So that man is gulping water. So in this complex verb construction, uh, it has been argued that the first part should be separated and placed uh, in a fifth word class. Uh, and there are reasons for that, and they seem to be good reasons. So that was a quick introduction to what word classes we find in Pamanyunga languages. And as you have already understood, I will get back uh, to these things. And that will be later.